Making a good impression is always very important, especially when it comes to movies. For the horror genre, this is very crucial, as most of these films are often short in runtime, so it's necessary to make an impact right away or risk losing your viewers. There are instances, however, when the film succeeds in giving us a great opening, but falls flat for the rest of the duration. Great openings such as these can disappoint viewers as the rest of the film never reaches the heights it began with. Please note there are spoilers abound in this list with scenes described in extreme detail, so you've been warned. It's also worth noting the criteria for terrible here will be the poor critic reviews or the fan reception it got. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 great opening scenes in otherwise terrible horror movies. Number 10, The Collection. The Collector is one of those movies that capitalized on that torture porn phase that saw the growth of the Saw movies and the Hostel movies. In fact, this one was supposed to be a prequel to Saw, but then was revamped into its own movie. Though nowhere near as impactful as its inspirations, the film's sequel, The Collection, has one of the most over-the-top openings in horror movie history that makes it almost worth the price of admission. The sequel opens with three friends entering a nightclub to have some fun. Inside, the partygoers are being watched by the collector above them. When one of the trio leaves after seeing her boyfriend cheating on her, she heads to a secluded room and activates a box that releases Arkin, the protagonist of the previous film. Soon after, a CGI tracking shot of wires and gizmos triggers a trap of spinning blades. The device descends on the dance floor and begins chopping everyone inside into a million pieces, with blood and limbs flying everywhere. This one is basically the opening to Ghost Ship, except imagine it with the subtlety of a Mortal Kombat fatality. In less than a few minutes, the collection has racked up a huge body count. Despite the negative reception, the film manages to deliver an opening that won't be leaving the viewers' minds anytime soon. Number 9. Urban Legend in the 90s, the success of Scream paved the way for many imitators, but very few were able to hit the heights of Wes Craven's film. Among them was 1998's Urban Legend, which featured an ensemble teen cast and replaced Scream's commentary on horror films with the discussion of urban legends and folklore. The film opens with Michelle Mancini driving to a gas stop where a creepy gas station worker tends to her. His odd looks, his stuttering speech, and the fact that he's played by Brad Dourif all point to him being the source of danger. When he tells Michelle to enter the station as her credit card is declined, he locks her in, but she escapes after a brief struggle. As she drives off to safety, Dourif shouts, someone is in the back seat. And as Michelle looks in her rearview mirror, a hidden figure decapitates her. In keeping with the film's subject matter, the scene is a recreation of the urban legend, The Killer in the Back Seat. The scene succeeds in a few different ways through its expert use of misdirection and casting to pull off a really iconic opening scene. Number 8. Alien Covenant Alien Covenant tried to course correct the franchise by removing the controversial aspects of Prometheus, such as the engineers and the deeper themes of faith. Because of this, we get more of a retread of the original Alien rather than the new direction its predecessor was aiming for. But the opening remains one of the best in the franchise despite its simplicity. It starts with a conversation between the android David and his creator Peter Wayland, where we explore more of their father son dynamic. Through Michael Fassbender's subtle performance, we see the seeds sown regarding the android's curious nature and his eventual turn as a full blown villain. It also deals with Covenant's theme as they talk about creation. Waylon, just like the human characters, seeks to find the purpose of his existence and his creator. David, on the other hand, knows why he was made and wants to become the creator himself, something he'll become by the end of the film. It's a shame that Prometheus' fan reception led to the interesting ideas being dropped in Covenant. As seen though here, an interesting conversation between these two characters happened to be more fascinating than the entire rest of the film. Number 7. Annabelle 2014's Annabelle was the first spin-off in the Conjuring universe, yet despite the brand recognition, the film failed to have the same quality as the mainline series. It's derivative, crude, and lacks the atmosphere of a good horror film. Despite this, its opening showed some promise, which made it more disappointing when the rest of the film turned out bad. The movie starts with John and Mia Form, who are expecting a baby. As a gift for the unborn child, the husband gives his wife the doll Annabelle, but things take a turn for the worst later in the night. The couple witnesses their neighbors get murdered by cult members who then set their sights on them. It's an intense struggle as the forms fight against two killers with the safety of Mia's baby at risk. Thankfully, the police arrive and shoot the male member dead while the female commits suicide. While the rest of the film apes the conjuring with its supernatural scares, the first few minutes managed to be an effective home invasion thriller. 
Had the rest of the film followed suit, this one really would have gained its own identity and stood out from the rest of the franchise. Number 6. Saw 5 Saw 5 took the series in a new direction, with Detective Mark Hoffman taking over as the new Jigsaw. The film explores how he inherited the role and his time with John Kramer, the original killer, while showcasing the series' tried and tested traps. Despite its premise though, the fifth entry really reeked of series fatigue and it felt like maybe they were running out of ideas. That said, it has one of the best openings in Saw history. Though the film properly opens with the pendulum trap, the scene soon shifts to Special Agent Peter Strom, who'd been hunting down the infamous killer in the previous movie. After being trapped in an operating room, he's captured by Hoffman and placed in a water box trap, which is designed to drown the good agent. As water soon fills up the contraption, our film's protagonist finds a clever solution by using a pen to perform a makeshift tracheotomy on himself, which allows him to breathe. Not only is this scene memorable, but Strom's decision is genuinely a good call in a life or death situation, something that's rare in the horror genre. Massive props to the actor Scott Patterson as well, who actually handled the scene doing his own stunts. Number 5. The Happening the Happening was panned by critics due to its stilted acting and baffling dialogue, and is considered one of M. Night Shyamalan's worst films. And yet the opening sequence remains effective even to this day in setting up the premise of the movie. It opens in Central Park, where two women are having a conversation, when everyone around them stops in their tracks. Suddenly, one of the women takes out her hairpin and stabs herself with it. We then shift to a nearby construction site where the workers are having a conversation. Their discussion is interrupted when a man drops from a building. As one of the men looks up, we see multiple people drop from the sky, all seemingly committing suicide. The opening succeeds with its good build-up and even decent acting from the construction worker, something the film's biggest stars failed to do. But the problem with the happening, much like Shyamalan's later works, is how promising it starts off, only to fall flat with its reveal. There's a decent amount of intrigue here, in that it gets you asking that question of why people are killing themselves, but unfortunately the twist doesn't quite land. Number 4. Resident Evil Paul W.S. Anderson's Resident Evil suffers from the dreaded video game movie curse that's plagued numerous adaptations. Yet unlike the sequels that followed, the original doesn't overuse Mila Jovovich's Alice, and features plenty of memorable scenes. One such scene is the opening, which starts off in The Hive, the Umbrella Corporation's research facility. When a thief throws the T-virus to contaminate the labs, the area's AI, the Red Queen, is forced to prevent the spread of the virus by drowning and gassing scientists. One memorable moment is inside one of the elevators, where Umbrella employees are trapped. When the emergency brakes kick in, a woman inside opens the doors and volunteers to squeeze her way out to get help. But when she sticks her head out of the elevator, the Red Queen notices their plan and activates the elevators, decapitating her in the process. With the release of the Netflix series as well as Welcome to Raccoon City, Resident Evil has gained a newfound appreciation from the fanbase, with scenes such as these and the famous laser hallway sequence which even made it into Resi 4. Number 3. Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday was intended to be the swan song for the iconic slasher, yet it disappointed numerous fans and casual audiences because of the lack of the physical form of Jason Voorhees. Instead, we got the legendary villain randomly having the ability to possess other people's bodies and only making a proper appearance at the very end of the movie. It's a shame, too, as the beginning delivers on what fans would have wanted in the first place. It opens to a woman driving to Camp Crystal Lake, Jason's hunting ground, in what seems to be a normal vacation. The scene starts off unassumingly and plays out like your typical Friday film. The action soon shifts when this character gets hunted down by Jason, but as she runs across the woods, it's revealed that she was the bait. Dozens of SWAT and FBI agents then arrive and blast Jason to smithereens until the man is all but pieces of burnt flesh. With an opening like that, it left audiences wondering what on earth could be next. Unfortunately, what was next was a bunch of weird possession and body swapping and not nearly enough Jason. Number 2. Anaconda Anaconda is often considered to be a cult classic and it's a guilty pleasure film for lots of horror fans. Despite its hokey efforts, the film is still memorable with a cast like Jennifer Lopez, Ice Cube and John Voight. And while other films use beautiful ladies as the opening victim, Anaconda uses Danny Trejo for the opening kill. Unlike the film's sillier tones such as the snake vomiting a decomposing John Voight, this scene plays it straight and intense. 
For one, it never features the creature and presents it as an unknown entity. It breaks through the floor of Trejo's ship and is relentless in its pursuit. Our victim manages to escape, however, and makes it on top of the boat's tower. But unlike Chief Brody from Jaws, who shoots his attacker, the anaconda proves to be too terrifying for Trejo, and so he kills himself rather than die from it. Despite his very limited screen time, the classic character actor absolutely sells this performance and makes the anaconda seem absolutely terrifying. Scenes such as this prove why the film, despite its reviews, is still beloved today, unlike most of the sequels that ended up in the direct DVD pile. Number 1. Ghost Ship Ghost Ship is a 2002 film that didn't get the greatest reviews, but when we're talking about opening sequences, I mean, I didn't write this list and this is the first one that came to mind, so I'm really happy to see it's at number one. Let's get into it if you haven't heard about it. The movie opens up with the introduction of the MS Antonia Grazza, which later becomes the titular ghost ship. We see the passengers and crew dancing, but when someone tightens a wire cord, it snaps across the dance floor and kills everyone, except a little girl named Katie. The film shows the outcome in full and gory detail as numerous people are bisected and the captain, who saved Katie, is decapitated from the mouth up. Some even manage to survive the initial attack as they try to crawl back to their other halves. In less than five minutes, Ghost Ship manages to deliver a memorable scene. With a sequence as intense as this one, it makes sense why so many people still talk about Ghost Ship even to this day. Though the film, much like the MS Antonia Grazza, has been lost in time, this particular opening will not be forgotten by many horror fans anytime soon. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other great openings to otherwise not so great horror movies. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great horror lists.